Hi, my name is Richard Treves and these are my 12 neocartographic tips for developers. So, first thing, a bit of an introduction. What is neocartography then? Well, by that I mean it's a mix of web map usability, cartography and graphic design. Another way of saying it is it's the 50 centimeters between the back of your user's head and the back of the screen they're looking at. Everything that happens in your brain and on the screen is what I'm talking about. I've done this presentation in Prezi as well is another thing you should know. Uh, it's sort of a map presentation thing. So we were talking about maps, I thought it was a good idea. Okay, so that's the introduction. The first tip is testing. So if you take three to five typical users of your map, give them some sample tasks, actually get them to do the kind of things that you think people will be able to do with your map. Test them for 35 minutes, 45 minutes, sit behind them observing what they're doing and prompt them saying, what are you thinking? If they ever get stuck, you'll identify most errors on your map. It's a really useful tip for uh, producing anything interactive, really. So that's my first tip. The second one is about data overload. So if you have lots and lots of points and there are too many that you can actually see them on screen all at the same time, what do you do about it? Well, the first thing you can do is split them into layers. So if you've got lots of points and they categorize into something, you split them into layers and do some kind of control downside and you can avoid having them all on screen at the time. So that's one solution. Google Maps use another solution, so what I call blobs and pins. You can see that at the top left. So they pick out a few points that they think are really good, and those become the pins, and everything else becomes a little blob. So you can get lots and lots of those little blobs on one map all at one time. So that's a nice, neat solution. Another solution is what I call density maps, bound and unbound. So in the bottom right there, you see we've got a density map of the world with all the countries. And above that is a unbounded density map, as I call it. And what happens with that one is mathematically, all the pins are grouped into a group and then the group gets a single symbol. I don't like the one on the top right at all. And that's because you can't actually see the boundaries of where the grouping has taken place. Whereas, of course, with the density map on the bottom, the more traditional way of doing it, you can see the boundaries of what the density shading actually alludes to there. So I think the bottom right one's much better. If you combine that with a normal kind of a view, what you can do is, at a world view, you can have a density map like that. And then as you zoom down using the regions control, you could have all the countries disappear and you can see the pins beyond that so that's a way of limiting the number of pins on screen at any one time because someone's got to zoom down to get below the density map to do and i think that's a good solution to data overload there's a lot more detail and the link you can see there in the bottom left hand of your screen third tip it's a sort of general discussion point which is less is more and the question is is which of these three identical tables is the best one I've just formatted them differently. And I hope you'll agree with me that the top one is the best one. Now, why is that the best table? Well, first of all, the number of lines has, has been minimized. So you can see in the bottom two tables, there's lots of horizontal and vertical lines that just aren't necessary. There's only one set of horizontal lines in the top table. Secondly, what I call chart junk has been minimized. So the serifs in the font on the bottom two tables just aren't necessary and they just make it difficult to read. And that's what's happening in the top table. Capitalized text is used in the top table and not the bottom two, and that aids readability. It's just much easier for your eye to grab onto a capital and read the rest in lowercase letters. What I call the apple tree rule is working in the top table as well. So for emphasis, you see I picked out carrot cake in red. Uh, on the other two tables, carrot cake is also picked out, but you can't see it. The emphasis is lost. And use of colour is good where you obey the apple tree rule, which is uh, an intense colour is only to be used on a small area to bring out a small area. And then for the larger areas, you use mushy, slushy greys and browns. And that's exactly like you have on an apple tree. And really, the bigger point about this is all ink 
in any sort of display, be it table or map, has got to have a purpose. We'll kind of expand that a bit in the later points. Fourth tip, marketing versus clarity. So we've got two maps of Portsmouth in the UK there on the left. The top one is from Google Earth and it has lots of layers from Google Earth in it. The bottom one is an ordnance survey map. And I hope you agree with me that the ordnance survey map is more successful at showing multiple layers all at one time. Now that's kind of unfair on Google because it's designed that way and some cartography has sat and tweaked the labels so they all work together and move them around. And that you can't do that in an automatic system such as uh, Google Earth on the top. However, there is one problem with what's going on in Google Earth, and that is that the icons have got marketing visuals in them. So you can just see sort of YouTube uh, squares there, and we've got something saying DG, and there's the camera icons that Google use all over the place. And they're all very busy, and they're very busy because they they have a sort of web 2.0 look, and I've got a little cut out there on the right of a web 2.0 look. And that works fine, and it says that you're professional on a web page. Uh, if it's an icon sat on its in a corner against a plain background on a complicated, busy map background like we've got here, it just doesn't work. And presenting things very plainly, as you'll see in the OS map at the bottom, works a lot better. There's more detailed sort of discussion of that point, but. The basic point is, is that there's a playoff between marketing and clarity. You want a clear map. And if you get too much marketing information in there, if you use too much marketing symbols, then you reduce the clarity and you've got to do a bit of both in whatever map you're talking about. Okay, my fifth tip is about data density. It's kind of related to the last two points, the sort of less is more and the marketing versus clarity points. And really what I'm saying here is work out what you want to emphasize and emphasize it. And you emphasize it by making its color stand out, by increasing its width or increasing its size. So the map on the right there is, this, is a Portsmouth again. And I just happen to have emphasized the railway, which you can't really pick out amongst all the layers in the map at the top. And you can see I've faded the background out to de-emphasize it. So you've got to think, what's important on my map? What do I want to de-emphasize and what do I want to emphasize? And anything that you can, you want to de-emphasize because you want to get as much information, as much data density into your map as possible. There's another example on the left there where it's a hydrographic map measuring water depths. And the gray lines is the survey trip ship that went round and took the measurements in the first place. I think the map on the left works better because it's left as a thin gray line. So you can pick it out if you want it, but because it's information that not everyone wants, you don't want it to be displayed as in the map on the right there where it's shown in red instead, because that then takes over the map and it just makes it too busy to understand the actual depth information. Color, color blindness. Primary reds and greens should be avoided in maps if you're using them to differentiate things. And that's because one in 20 males can't differentiate primary reds and greens. Apart from that, you want to go for harmonious colors. So there's a nice harmonious color palette working in the map on the left there. And symbolic colors in the map on the right, blues work really well for water, you just instantly link blue with water so you don't have to look it up in a key that's very clever a particular bug buyer of mine is people who use big areas and mark it in reds uh, with no apparent reason and i think it looks like a quentin tarantino movie a big sea of blood and uh, that's to be avoided again back to the apple tree rule we've just discussed there's lots and lots of stuff about color in in graphic design and maps so i can't really talk very much more about it but there's a link there to color brewer 